A few weeks ago, I was on Facebook and this woman, Shauna, had posted in a parenting group asking for help with installing her son's car seat. Shauna said that the car seat came with an instruction manual, but that she's not good with instructions, so she needs something simple and to the point. The comments were less than helpful. They said things like, this is what happens when idiots have children, and she's the reason her kids are gonna die in a car crash, shrug emoji, and she's either illiterate or just fucking lazy. There were hundreds of comments and most of them were negative. After all of this, Shauna left a final response before she deleted the post. This is my child. I asked for help with the car seat, not me reading. Bye. Find something better to do if you don't have no help. So the thing is, this was posted in a more progressive parenting group. A group with rules like be kind and courteous and no racism, sexism, or any other ism. And yet, here were these so-called progressive, woke people making fun of a woman for her struggles with reading and writing. Isn't there something wrong with that? Today, I want to investigate literacy. Why illiterate is used as an insult, why it shouldn't be, and why literacy is a social justice issue that needs to be taken seriously. So, consider this a call-out video, where we, the woke brigade, are getting illiterate, hashtag cancelled. So let's start with defining literacy. We often use it to mean the ability to read and write, but it can also mean knowledge in a specific area like internet literacy or saying that someone is politically literate. These definitions are the most common ones and there's nothing super wrong with them, but I would like to use more nuanced definitions during this video. So here's UNESCO's definition. Beyond its conventional concept as a set of reading, writing, and counting skills, literacy is now understood as a means of identification, understanding, interpretation, creation, and communication in an increasingly digital, text-mediated, information-rich, and fast-changing world. The Program for International Assessment of Adult Competencies defines literacy as understanding, evaluating, using, and engaging with written text to participate in the society to achieve one's goals and to develop one's knowledge and potential. The final definition, this one from the Ministry of Education of Alberta, Canada, says that literacy is the ability, confidence, and willingness to engage with language to acquire, construct, and communicate meaning in all aspects of daily living. So literacy isn't just the ability to read or write, but wanting to do it, being confident in it, and using reading and writing to do things for yourself and for your society. Literacy is complex, but it is also fragile. Reading and writing aren't skills like learning how to ride a bike. Once you learn how to ride a bike, you don't forget it. That's like the thing people say. Literacy is more like math. So you have the basics, addition, subtraction, multiplication, etc., and everything else kind of grows off of that. You know, you can't really do calculus unless you know algebra first. But if you don't constantly practice those concepts, you lose them. I mean, take me as an example. I took AP Calculus in high school, but I haven't practiced those skills in years. And now, uh, please don't ask me to calculate the rate that a snowball is melting because I will cry. But, not to brag or anything, but I do remember how to do addition and subtraction, and I remember most of my times tables. <laughs> Those are no problem because they are the basics, and I practice them every time I make a budget or calculate how much weight my puppy has gained since last month. This is true of reading and writing as well. 
Even if someone learns letters and words and putting them together and all that language stuff, if they don't practice that skill, they lose it. So to recap, literacy is reading and writing for a purpose used to interact with the world, and it's a skill that takes a long time to learn, requires constant practice, and can be forgotten if it isn't used. So what does this have to do with Shauna and the Facebook incident? Which sounds either like a really good pop punk album or a really bad children's book. To understand Shauna, we need to understand literacy levels in the United States. See, we have a literacy problem. I'm not gonna get into the history of literacy studies, but basically there are five levels of literacy. Level five is like PhD award-winning author level, and level zero is basically not being able to read or write anything in that language. Level three is what we consider to be the minimum for everyday competency in today's world. Think like being able to follow recipes and writing letters and writing emails, etc. What percentage of US adults do you think fall below this level three threshold? 5%? 10%? Well, according to an ongoing literacy study, the Program for the International Assessment of Adult Competencies, in the United States, 52% of adults have a literacy level below level three. That means that over half of adults don't have the reading and writing skills they need to be productive members of society. But what does this have to do with social justice? I mean, yeah, a lot of adults don't have the skills required to be functional in society, but does that really mean it's a systemic issue? Well, let's talk a little bit about what illiteracy actually looks like. Now, like I mentioned before, illiteracy is way more complicated than just not knowing how to read and write. If you are illiterate, you lack a lot of fundamental skills, and it permeates every single part of your life. Because, yeah, it means not being able to read research papers or write blog posts, but it's also struggling in school so you drop out. You try to get a job, but you can't fill out the application. So you try to file for unemployment, but you can't navigate the site. When you go to the store, you can't read the ingredients to know which type of cereal is safe for your son who has a peanut allergy. If your son goes to the hospital, you can't read his chart or the surgery waiver or the medical bills. You have to ask your neighbors to read your mail for you, which gives them access to some of your most personal and private information. You needed their help when you moved in too because you couldn't read your lease agreement. And maybe you can't leave your abusive partner because you can't get your driver's license because you can't take the written portion of the test. These scenarios are real everyday things that adult literacy learners have to deal with. And when you're stuck in poverty and you don't have a voice, you do anything you can to get by. And sometimes that means crime. This is what people mean when they talk about the school-to-prison pipeline. If you struggle with reading and writing, it snowballs and affects every single part of your life. This is a systemic issue. On top of all of that, adult literacy learners also have to deal with the stigma attached to their literacy level. Illiterate is an insult. Illiterate is another way to call someone stupid. It's what you throw at someone who makes a spelling or grammar mistake. It's what you use to describe people you think are dumb or poor or just rural, inbred West Virginia rednecks. It's another flavor of ableism with a little dash of classism and racism thrown in just for funsies. Literacy learners are treated similarly to a lot of disabled folks. They're ignored, made fun of, and silenced. But social justice and advocacy groups have been fighting for accessibility and inclusivity for disabled people for a while now. 
So why isn't that the case for adult literacy learners? Why is illiterate still an insult even in so-called inclusive spaces? Well, there are two possible reasons for this. Reason A is that people aren't aware of just how many adult literacy learners there actually are. We often think that illiterate adults is a really small group. But remember, more than half of adults in the United States fall below the functional level. Okay, so if there are so many, why don't we know about them? Well, because they often do everything they can to hide their illiteracy. Because when they show it, we shame them for asking for help and tell them they shouldn't have kids. Which, by the way, is eugenics. That's just eugenics. You know these people. You just don't know that they're struggling. On top of that, adult literacy learners are functionally muzzled. I mean, how can you write a blog or post on Facebook or Twitter if you don't know how to write? How can you articulate the complexities of your identity and your struggles and your hopes and your dreams if your vocabulary is only a couple hundred words deep? How can you read about the lives of people like you if you never made it past a third grade reading level? So that's reason A. Reason B is a little more pessimistic. So there is the possibility that people do know that adult literacy learners exist, but they just don't care because they see it as a personal failing. This is very much the capitalist pull yourself up by your bootstraps mentality just applied to knowledge. Your education is within your own power, so if you don't know something or don't know how to do something, it's your fault and you should feel bad. We like to make fun of people for being stupid and lazy. We want to feel good for being better and smarter and harder working than people around us because if we are better and smarter and harder working, then maybe we can win the capitalism lottery. This is the lens that many people use when looking at literacy learners. They're just lazy. They wouldn't be so poor if they just learned how to read. But it's not laziness or stupidity, partially because IQ is fake and also based on eugenics, that there are lots of reasons why adults struggle with literacy. According to the Literacy Foundation, some of the most common risk factors for low literacy levels are having parents who struggle with literacy, a lack of books at home, dropping out of school usually so they can go to work, living in poverty, having physical and learning disabilities, and language barriers. None of these things are fully within your own control. Being illiterate is not some sort of personal shortcoming. People struggle with illiteracy because the system failed them. Okay, so even if this isn't a personal thing, it's still the cause of social issues, right? It's the illiterate folks' fault that the economy's in the trash. It's the illiterate folks' fault that Trump was elected. It's the illiterate folks' fault that fill in the blank. Ignoring the fact that the people who struggle with literacy are often unable to vote, they are literally disenfranchised, this is a classic case of mixing up cause and effect. Yeah, things might be better if every single person were level 5 literate and the most informed on every topic, but that's not the fault of the people who are living below the poverty line, who couldn't go to school because they had to work to support their families, who have visual or cognitive impairments, who don't have any support network, let alone a support network full of people who nurture an appreciation for reading and writing. These people are not the cause of social ills. They're the victims of them. They are stuck in cycles of poverty. They're tied down by systemic racism and sexism. They're harmed by a lack of access to healthcare and education. And most of them want help, but they're just met with ridicule and shame. Now this looks pretty bleak, right? I mean, over half of all adults are unable to do a ton of things that are important to keeping our society running well, and a lot of the causes for why they ended up there in the first place are systemic issues that are 
kind of baked into the way our country is organized and it feels hopeless. But there are ways out of this. There are ways for adult literacy learners to gain literacy. There are groups who work out of community centers who work on teaching adults reading and writing skills, along with other literacy-related life skills like applying for jobs or housing or driver's licenses. And there's stuff that the rest of us can do to help, too. One of the easiest things to do is to donate to your local literacy center. I have a link down in the description of a site where you can search to see if you have a literacy center in your area. If you don't have one nearby, you can donate to your local library. You can volunteer and do outreach. I've put a bunch of resources in the description with links to various foundations and organizations and places where you can donate or find information about literacy, so be sure to check those out if you want to help. There are also little everyday choices that you can make that make the lives of literacy learners way, way easier. When possible, use simple and straightforward words and sentence constructions to convey your ideas. And this is also just a good idea in general, not just when you think you're talking to someone with some literacy issues. If you're interacting with someone and they want to read something later or somewhere else, let them. If they want you to read something for them, just do it. Don't pressure them to perform a literate task in front of you. And remember, adult literacy learners aren't stupid. They are often smart and driven and kind, and they're just frustrated with the world because it was built for literate people, but not built to actually help people out of illiteracy. The best thing you can do is just be nice. Don't make assumptions about people's literacy levels. Fight that gut reaction to make fun of people when they make simple mistakes on the internet. Call other people out when you see them using illiterate as an insult. And if someone asks for help with installing their kid's car seat, just fucking help them, okay? <laughs> The story of literacy learners is a story of disenfranchisement and ableism and the ills of capitalism. They are being oppressed under all the same kinds of structures that oppress people of color, LGBTQ folks, disabled people, poor people, neurodivergent people, and everyone else who is held down by this shitty system. I don't know what the solution is. I don't think it's something that can be fixed overnight or by one YouTube video. I think it's going to take something bigger. But until we can make those necessary systemic changes, we need to start by changing ourselves and doing what we can to include adult literacy learners in our progressivism. I want to leave you with a quote from the International Literacy Association. The ability to read, write, and communicate connects people to one another and empowers them to achieve things they never thought possible. Communication and connection are the basis of who we are and how we live together and interact with the world. This is something worth fighting for, don't you think? Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. I know this one was on the longer end, uh, but I'm just really passionate about literacy and also the hypocrisy of shitty online leftists. So uh, anyway, um, be sure to like and subscribe and do all those fun YouTube things. If you want more of me, you can come and join us over on Patreon. Uh, membership starts at $2 a month and you can get lots of fun stuff like polls and seeing videos early and getting custom written poems by me, an actual published poet. Uh, so if that sounds like something you would be interested in, check it out in the description below. You can also go follow me on Twitter at Zoe underscore the B, but I only ever tweet at like 6.30 in the morning. So, <laughs> you know, just like weigh your options there. Um, anyway, thank you again for watching and 
Until next time, stay safe, stay warm, and I will see y'all again soon, I hope. Bye, folks. Hashtag canceled.